Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining me remotely or virtually. Um, this is a workshop about interviews, um, how to interview successfully. We're going to cover a few different things in this in this workshop. Obviously, you're not here to ask me questions, but I'll give you our contact details at the end of the workshop. So if there's anything that I've missed or anything you'd like me to clarify, you can you can pop us an email and we're here here to help. So today we're going to be looking at a few different parts of the whole interview process. We're going to talk about how you can prepare successfully for an interview, how to understand the different types of interview, because there are um, different sort of styles of interview that you might come across once you start job hunting. Um, and we're going to talk about what the differences in those are um, and how to prepare for them slightly differently. We'll talk about actually answering interview questions, how to structure them, how to answer a question successfully. We'll touch upon video interviews, which are obviously a lot more common under the uh, current circumstances and, and you might be running into those more frequently than usual. Um, and like I said, if there's any questions at the end of the workshop, you can, you can come back uh, to MGX Works um, for clarification on anything. So let's get started hoping that this is all coming across fine on the recording, uh, the slideshow. But we'll start at the, at the beginning of, of the interview process, which is when you are going to first meet your panel or the lone interviewer, whoever it's with, um, and making that first impression. And it's kind of an old cliche, but it's very true that you only get one, one chance to make a good first impression. And there are some really simple things that you can bear in mind to make sure that you come across well when the interviewer first, first meets you. The first and, and probably most obvious of these is to arrive to your interview on time. Punctuality is one of the most basic requirements of, of nearly any employer. And if you want to appear professional, this is basically one of the, the first and most easy uh, ways to, to do that. If you're not on time for your interview, then, then why should an employer think that, that you'll manage to make it on time to work every day? Um, it's as simple as that, really. That's why it's, it's so important. And even better than arriving on time is arriving early, if you can, at least five to ten minutes early. And that's just showing the interviewer that punctuality is actually something that you, that you value. Um, and this is exactly the same, whether it's an in-person interview or a video interview. Particularly if you are going uh, somewhere, you're going into an office or on site somewhere to interview, um, it's definitely better to prepare to be early. Have a look at your travel times, make sure you know where you're going, check the maps. You can always go and try and aim to arrive sort of half hour, 20 minutes early because you can always wait on that side of, uh, of town um, and find a coffee shop nearby and, and just get your head in the game. Um, and you're just gonna be much better prepared if you, if you come into your, in your interview and you've had some time to gather your thoughts and, and prepare yourself. You're just gonna be in a much better headspace than if you've kind of been running through Victoria Station and desperately looking on Google Maps to find out where you're going. So number one rule for making a good impression, be there on time, be there early, even better. Dressing professionally, of course. This is always going to depend um, a bit on the type of workplace that you're you're going for. And, and you, you do want to dress for the industry that you're applying for or that you're hoping to, to work in. If you're going for something corporate, they're obviously much more likely to expect you fully suited and booted um, in a full suit, shoes, tie, the whole shebang. Um, but even if you're going for a role that's, that's not a corporate role or that you wouldn't necessarily be wearing a suit uh, in your day-to-day -day job, it's still so important that, that you dress at least at the very least kind of smart casual for your interview you know a shirt rather than a t-shirt trousers rather than jeans definitely shoes rather rather than trainers um, because it's still all about making that that impression and showing that you're taking it seriously um, and and you're showing them that you are a, a young professional um, and make sure as well that as well as being neat and tidy clothes wise you've you've done all that other stuff you've brushed your hair brushed your teeth you're clean and, and smelling good and all of that stuff it's just sort of those little tricks that we we play on ourselves to make ourselves feel confident and we feel sort of ready and polished to go for our for our interview because you have to bear in mind when you're interviewing with the company eventually and hoping that you get the job you're going to be representing that company in some capacity at least and so turning up and, and looking neat and tidy and looking smart just shows that you're kind of bearing that in mind that eventually you're going to be representing the company well 
think about your body language when you first meet an, an interviewer. Um, and make sure you're, you're looking confident, you're standing up straight, you're smiling, you're making eye contact. Handshakes is obviously not as much of a consideration with everything going on as, as it once was. You're probably much less likely to, to have to give a handshake uh, these days. But it, it, you can really sort of compensate for that by making a good impression in all those other little ways, looking them in the eye, smiling, you know, greeting them with a good, firm, professional greeting. Um, all of that stuff is going to kind of compensate for the fact that we don't have that physical bonding exercise that we normally have with a, with a handshake. Um, and you just want to give yourself that impression of, of confidence uh, and professionalism um, and and use use up your space don't you know when you sit down sit up straight try not to go within yourself or take up as, as little space as you think is is needed um, you want to come across like confident open open body language and not kind of look like a bundle of nerves even if you're even if you're feeling that way inside and the thing about body language we'll talk about this shortly when we talk about confidence but kind of using our body and making those small tweaks just in how we're holding ourselves is a really good way to kind of play tricks in our mind and make ourselves feel a bit more confident than, than we perhaps thought. And of course, for any interview, you're going to feel so much better if you have prepared well um, and that you feel that you have some sort of indication of what questions might come up. You prepared some, some strong answers. As prepared as possible um, is really going to help you uh, succeed in that, in that interview. So that's all well and good saying to saying to be prepared, but how exactly do we do that? How do you prepare for, for an interview? There's a few different techniques that, that we'll talk through, um, but of course the, the main and, and most beneficial way to prepare is to start to try and predict what sort of questions you're going to be asked, what's going to come up in the interview, um, and what are you likely to have to demonstrate in terms of skills and experience. So those questions, they're going to depend on a lot of things. Sometimes they're going to depend on the role itself. A lot of the time it's going to be very dependent on, on the company, what sort of company they are. If you're going for either a corporate role or a role in the public sector or a charity role, those jobs, um, much more often you'll see a kind of competency based interviews. They're a lot more black and white. They're a lot more likely to have a panel sort of scribbling notes as you're as you're talking a bit less interactive, a bit less, a bit less chatty, a bit more. They give you the question and you take your time answering and, and they make notes on, on what you're saying. Whereas if you're going for a kind of smaller independent company or a startup of any kind, those interviews are likely to be a bit more, a bit more conversational, a bit more skills based um, and a bit more kind of relaxed um, but either way you can still prepare for either one of those interviews and a lot of the steps that you'll take in preparation completely apply to both styles of interview you'll, you'll be glad to know um, but it's important to kind of consider what what you expect from the company depending on where they are in the market what sort of sector they're in whereabouts they are in the industry so you can begin by sort of carrying out a search on the internet to identify some likely questions that might come up. Um, for some of you, I'm sure will know about glassdoor.com, but for those of you who don't, it is a really, really useful tool. It's useful in, in a kind of bunch of ways to do with your careers. You can kind of get a sense of what it's like to work for a place, the workplace culture and, and so on. But it's especially useful when it comes to preparing for interview because you can actually use glassdoor.com to search for previous interview questions um, and sometimes you'll find that candidates who've interviewed for the same role that you're going for or at the same company that you're interviewing with have left some notes about their experience of the interview of the application what came up um, what didn't come up how they wanted you to answer the question so it's a really really great tool for you to use and and definitely i would recommend your first port of call once you've got that once you've been shortlisted for that interview so as an example, before this session, I used Glassdoor to look for Middlesex University, as just as an example. Um, and you can see this is one of the first answers and I've just screenshotted it. So a candidate who's come and interviewed at Middlesex has very kindly provided a bunch of questions that they got asked in their interview. Um, and you can see that they've actually shared the very questions that they got asked, which is incredibly useful when it comes to preparing, especially if you're going for the same role, because they're in front of you, you've got questions that 
that are very likely to come up because it's exactly what they've asked candidates in the past. Um, and even if it's not the role that you're going for, but there's questions from a company, as you can see, it, it does make clear what type of, of interview it's going to be. So this interview, by looking at the questions, you can tell that that's a competency interview, one of the interviews that asks give me an example of, or can you tell me about a time when you, um, and so instantly, even if it's not the same role you're going for, you can sort of expect, okay, this organization is gonna, gonna probably do a competency style interview, um, and they're gonna ask me to be providing skills um, and, and experience that match up with the kind of job description and match up with what's required for this, for this role. And then they've also asked, um, given questions that would probably apply to a, to a bunch of roles, for example, if if you notice a teammate struggling, there's not going to be that many roles that, that don't involve working in a, in a team in, in some capacity. So you could prepare an answer for that with the expectation that might come up. Why do you want the job? That's very likely to come up. And so you can see that using Glassdoor is, um, is a really sort of nifty, nifty trick to, to help you predict some of those questions that might come up. Um, and as a result of that, prepare some really strong answers for those questions. And as well as Glassdoor, you can just use Google other search engines to look for kind of interview questions for specific job roles, because not everything is going to be on, on Glassdoor, but you can always search, you know, really specifically on search engines, lab assistant interview questions and answers or interview questions for fitness centres. Um, and what you can do once you start browsing those, you'll probably start to notice certain questions across different sites kind of popping up again and again, and kind of make a mental note of those questions, because those are the ones that are probably most common most likely to come up in your interview. And also for those of you that have already started interviewing or have, have done interviews before in a similar industry, think about what you were asked in those interviews and, and, and think back and think, did you have a, a strong uh, response for those prepared? Keep notes after your interviews however it went, if it went well, if it didn't go so well, if there were questions that you know you gave a strong answer for, if there are questions that you completely weren't expecting, or if there were questions that you gave an answer but you thought could be improved a bit, it's just going to be really useful when preparing for the next one. So especially in the current circumstances, it's, it's possible that you'll need to do a few interviews. You might not land the very first one you do. You might need to kind of get in the swing of interviews and get a bit of experience. So if that is the case, then one of the best things you can do is kind of use every interview as a learning experience and uh, take some notes and, and sort of use those when, when preparing for the next one. Familiarise yourself as much as you possibly can with the job description. This would be one of the main things you can do to start to predict what questions are going to come up because any interview is basically aiming to establish how comfortable the candidate is with what the job entails. So any duties and responsibilities that have been laid out in the job description, they want to kind of see if you've got any experience with that, if you're comfortable with those, with those duties. So you want to make sure that any skills that you're talking about are kind of relevant to that job description. If they've said in the, in the job description that they, they want someone who's, who can work really diligently under pressure and has got a keen attention to detail, for example, then you're not really going to want to prepare questions that talk a lot about how creative you are or, or how good you are at, at learning new things. You always want to kind of use that as your guide, the job description. Um, to give you some sort of clues on, on what exactly they want you to demonstrate. And you can sort of give your job description a bit, a bit of an x-ray. What are the essential skills that they're asking for? Highlight those in red. These are the things that you really want to try and get across, not just in your application when you're um, first going for the job, but when it comes to interview. After you've highlighted the essential skills, look for the desirable skills. What are the things that aren't necessarily essential to do the role, but that are definitely going to give you a leg up if you can provide some examples of, of how you're experienced in those areas or that you're confident in those areas. And as well as looking for the essential skills and the desirable skills, look through the job description at the duties. They are going to lay out nearly any job description, what is involved in the role on a day-to-day -day basis. And so what you can do is look through each of those bullet points, what's involved in the role, anything that you've done before, whether that be at uni, whether that be in part-time roles, whether that be in sort of extracurricular projects, anything that you think, well, I, I know I can do that because I've done X, Y, Z, highlight those things on the job description and try and include examples of those types of duties when you're preparing your answers um, because it's going to sound like you're a lot more experienced in what's going to be involved in this very job that you're that you're interviewing for 
And as much as you should be familiarizing yourself with the job description, you're also wanna, gonna wanna get really back into grips with your CV and your cover letter and your application. Because if you've been shortlisted for interview, then the chances are that they've seen something on your CV or on your application that they think is, is impressive and they'd like to know more. So whatever you have said that you can do on your CV or your original application to the job, you want to kind of go back and remind yourself, what, what did I sort of highlight? What skills and experience did I really uh, hone in on on those applications? And be ready to talk a bit more about those because they've got you in, they want to get you in in front of them. They're very likely to kind of want you to elaborate on some of those things you've said in your application. So look at what you said you did and provide some examples um, ready to go in case you're prompted to, to give an example of those things that you've said that you can do. Um, and also your interviewers, they might not ask you the, the questions in the exact way that you have um, prepared for, but one of the examples of the skills and experience you have may very well still fit the question that they're asking. So really think about what it is that they're asking you. What are they trying to find out that you know about um, and what are they kind of looking for in your response? And really think about that before, before you answer. Because if you provided some or prepared some solid examples before your interview, the chances are that one of those will, will probably suffice to answer um, the questions if you've really used the job description as a guide in terms of preparing your examples. So on that subject, talking about using your CV and, and cover letter uh, and application to prepare for an interview, um, what you'll probably find once you start job hunting is that you end up submitting CVs here, there and everywhere. Same with cover letters. What you should be doing before you apply for any job is really tailoring that CV and cover letter for that role. So every time you've looked at the job description, you've looked at the advertisement and you've kind of tweaked your CV and cover letter to really highlight those skills that they're looking for. And so if that's the case, then I would highly, highly recommend just creating a folder on your on your computer, a job search kind of folder, um, and then creating some subfolders within that for every role that you apply for. So when you apply for a role, you create another folder with that job title um, as the name of it and save everything to do with that application in that folder. So save the CV that you submitted, label them clearly, save the cover letter. If you've done an online application, download that and save that to the, to the folder. Um, and definitely save the job description for that role immediately because what you'll find sometimes is that there's a job description online and you kind of look at that and use it for your application but you don't save it and when it comes time to prepare for interview that's kind of gone and, and you've lost it and you've got to get in touch and, and ask for it and um, which isn't which isn't as ideal so if there's a job description attached to the vacancy save it immediately if you've applied for it because that's going to really help you later on when it comes to preparing for the interview same with any online advertisement uh, sometimes the online vacancy includes a few details that might not be in the job description, so copy and paste that text. Anything that you've used in preparing an application um, for a role, then save that because it's just going to help you when it comes to preparing for the interview. So as well as preparing the questions that, or predicting rather the questions that might come up, you can definitely get start by practicing some common interview questions. There are some things that are just nearly always going to come up, no matter what the industry, no matter what the role. Nearly every interview is going to start with the interviewers asking you to just to just tell you, um, tell them about yourself. Um, and this sounds like a really sort of simple question, but it's actually, uh, as I'm sure some of you know from interview, it's not the easiest thing to to sort of concisely summarize all your skills and experience in a really relevant way that isn't waffling or that isn't a boring or that doesn't end up you starting from when you were a toddler and, and telling your life story. So you really want to try and practice the answer to this question because it will almost definitely come up. We've got loads of resources um, with MGX Works to, to help you with this. On our mgxworks.com you can find some information about elevator pitches um, and some of you probably know about an elevator pitch. It kind of comes from um, the idea of being in an elevator with someone and you've got maybe 30 seconds or so to, to tell them about yourself and really sell yourself in that short amount of time. Um, but preparing an elevator pitch is a really good idea for real life scenarios exactly like this one in an interview being asked to tell the interviewer about yourself. You're going to want to cover who you are, what you're doing now, how you've got to this point, what skills and experience have you gained on the way and what you're looking to, to become in the future or where you're looking to go. So definitely expect this question and if it doesn't come up in one interview it will almost definitely come up in in the next one 
what do you know about us and what do you know about the job? Um, employers will quite often ask these questions because they're going to want to know how much kind of homework you've done, how much research you've done, um, and whether you actually have a genuine interest in both the role and the company. If you've done what we've talked about so far and really give a thorough uh, read through of that job description, then you're going to be quite confident talking about what you know about the job. Um, and to really complement that, you're going to want to do quite a bit of research on, on the company to be able to confidently speak about them and also relate things about the company back to your individual answers and the examples you provide. But I will, I'll, I'll get to that shortly to, to give you a bit more information on that. Um, what skills do you think are needed for this role? Very similar to what you know about the job. This isn't a trick question. If they're asking you what skills you think are needed, it's basically testing whether you have read and understood the job description, the advertisement. It's not a trick. You don't need to kind of judge the job and, and come up with new skills that, that they haven't outlined. Um, whatever they have said, that uh, the skills that are needed for the role, they're kind of looking to see have you absorbed that and really, and really taken that in. So use the information you've been given, use those as, as clues and indicators of the type of things that you should be talking about in your interview. What are your strengths and weaknesses? This is what are your strengths is kind of a, a similar type of thing to tell me about yourself is that we're not uh, the best at kind of talking about ourselves without it sounding like bragging. A lot of us are kind of a, a bit more modest than that, but you really have to look at this question in an interview situation as a, as a good positive opportunity for you finally to lay out exactly why you are right for this, for this role. Um, so you want to talk about the strengths that are really closely related to the job description, anything that you've done in the past that has has given you some relevant experience and that will make you confident in taking on the duties that are involved in this job and that's both technical and soft skills some jobs are going to want to know really specific um, strengths whether that be about software or kind of technical skills and others are going to be looking to understand um, and looking to see that you understand the soft skills that are required whether that's communication whether that's teamwork whether that's providing really excellent customer service or building client relationships or acting as a point of contact between departments. So when an, in, when an interviewer asks you to describe your strengths, you want to share your best kind of qualities and pers personal attributes, but you always want to relate them back to the role for, for what you're interviewing. And then what are your weaknesses is, is probably one of, the, one of the most horrible questions to get in an interview because it's another one of those ones that people think, oh, this is, this is a bit of a trick question and they might, be, they might be trying to catch me out. But it's not, and you shouldn't think of it that way. Um, every employer, you know, they, they're going to know that every candidate is not perfect. Every single one of us has, has got areas that we need to work on a bit more. And by asking you what your weaknesses are, they're trying to gauge a sense of how much you know the areas where you need to improve. And they're going to be looking for a kind of honest response from you. But there are a few things that you should bear in mind when answering a question like this. The first is not to give a kind of answer like I'm, I'm too much of a perfectionist or I, I work too hard or I take too much on and um, because it just comes across a disingenuous a bit of a phony answer what you're essentially saying is that you're you're too perfect um, and that's just never going to be the case at all most interviewers are, are not really gonna gonna buy that um, so you want to give an honest weakness but you also don't want to give a weakness that is going to directly affect the way that you do this particular role so if, if a job has asked for excellent written communication you don't want to give it as an example that you're terrible at spelling um, or if it's asked for excellent numeracy skills you don't want to say my, my mental maths are terrible so don't pick any weakness that's going to directly sort of conflict with what is in the job description pick something that's maybe not so relevant and the third and, and most important thing to remember is that whatever weakness you do give as an example always always end that answer by providing an example of how you're working on that so my weakness is i would say that maybe i'm too xyz but I'm working on this and um, for example I have you know I've started a course on LinkedIn learning to get me up to scratch with this area of things give some sort of example that shows that you're aware of that weakness and you're kind of working to, to overcome that that's really going to impress an interviewer much more than sort of saying that from the beginning you're you have no weaknesses or or you're kind of just too too perfect overall 
what motivates you and, and why you want the job? Um, these are questions that are kind of wanting to get a bit more to, to what makes you tick um, and why the role appeals to you. And these are good questions because it allows you to bring some of your personality uh, into the interviewer uh, and you can use some sort of personal experiences and your actual passions and interests and relate those to the role. So that's always a really good opportunity to, to give them a bit more of a sense of who you are as an individual, those types of questions. They will almost certainly end their interview by asking if you have any questions for them um, and the answer will always be yes you will have some some questions ready for them but I, i'll get to that quite shortly um, and we can talk about how um, what are some of the questions that that you should you should have when that opportunity arises so do your homework as i said research the company as as much as you can um, research the role that you're interviewing for have a look on linkedin for people who do that same role have a look at what their day-to-day -day job entails how long they tend to be in that role what they move on to do um, after doing that role just do a bit of kind of detective work using linkedin and, and google and just do as much research as as possible when it comes to the company you're going to want to be looking at um things you don't want to start by giving a bunch of facts and, and figures I, I would say um, it's not really anyone can kind of uh, memorize some some stats about how many employees they have or how many branches they have um, I think what's a lot more impressive in an interview is if you've looked at their kind of mission what's their ethos what are their values um, because those are the bits of information that kind of give you an impression of what the tone of the company is what's their personality what do they value where do they see themselves fitting uh, in the market and in the industry and that's really going to help you with particular interview questions especially things like why do you want to work with us you can gain some really unique ideas by looking into what the company aims to do how do they want to present themselves where do they where do they see themselves fitting into the into the industry you kind of want to show that you would fit into that company culture and that you share a similar personality to the, to the type of um, employee they normally have and you share the same values as what they're as what they're looking for so most companies are going to have social media accounts some of them will have blogs a lot of them are going to have press releases news events don't just stop um, your research once you've once you've checked out the website I had a quick scan through really try and do as much as much as possible especially because the social media pages that's a bit more kind of the customer facing um, sort of platforms where they're going to be want to highlight they're going to be highlighting um, those kind of things that that there is part of their larger mission as a company and those are the things they're going to be quite pleased to hear you reference in interview questions so just try and get a sense of what is it they're leading towards and what are their side interests you know are they looking to to be a particularly sustainable uh, company are they looking to do collaborations are they do they have more of a community focus is it uh, educational initiatives that they're getting involved with you kind of want to find out what's what's making them tick in you, you want to relate that to your own personal values and, and why that interests you and why you want to get involved um, with the company. And another thing you can do, as well as using LinkedIn to have a look at, at the role that you're interviewing for and how it how it usually works, you can use LinkedIn to have a look at actually who is going to be interviewing you. They're likely to send you the name of the interviewer or the interview panel. Um, and, and just to kind of help, help yourself and, and get rid of some of those nerves, I'd say it's quite a, a nifty trick to use LinkedIn to just have a, have a bit of a stalk of them. See who they are, what is their role in the company, how long have they been at the company, who do they kind of work with in their role and it's just going to turn them into less of a scary faceless stranger that's going to be judging you in an interview situation and it's just going to make them seem like more of a, a person it's going to give you some context to their to their role and how they how they fit into the company so I definitely recommend checking out your interviewer if you know their name beforehand if the company is one that offers a product or a service um, then that's a further thing that you should probably do a bit of research on even if your day-to-day -day job is not really going to be dealing with that um, so much you're still kind of looking to to get involved in the team that is involved in getting that product out there or that that service out there so it's just part of learning all you can about what the company is is offering um, and that's quite important and if it's a company that you've been a customer of or, or a service user of then that's even better 
better because if you kind of got an understanding of the company from outside the organization and you can maybe play something in your in your examples or your answers about um, how you have dealt with the company as a, as a consumer or a customer or a user and um, that's really going to set you uh, one step ahead of your of your competition in that case. Sometimes it's going to be useful to be aware of the company's direct competitors. I won't go into this in too much detail because this is kind of depends on the type of role you're going for. Um, but for certain roles, they're going to, they may want to test your kind of commercial awareness, um, what you know about the industry, what you know about how they place in the industry, how they perform against their competitors, um, how they're trying to improve upon their competitors. Um, so it's, you can just basically try and keep your skills and knowledge up to date throughout your whole job search and, and it's really not as, as difficult as it, as it sounds it's just a matter of keeping an eye out you know there's loads of online events at the minute they've never been kind of easier to access with us all doing things virtually and and from home so log on to some of those industry events when you've got a free hour in the evening read relevant websites or publications uh, maybe you know set some alerts on your news apps of, of things that are relevant to your industry so that you're just kind of being kept up to date with with what's going on um, and if you've got that information and that's going to be really impressive if you can if you can use that in an interview and demonstrate that knowledge so a couple of different types of interview um, as I said the most common types are um, competency interviews and strength-based interviews so you may know some some bits and bobs about these types of interviews already um, for those of you who don't there's there's some kind of key differences between them um, competency interviews they are probably most common at the moment however strength-based interviews uh, are becoming more and more kind of prominent um, forward-thinking companies or younger companies or startups tend to use them a bit more strength-based interviews are kind of a bit more about about your personality and and finding out about you as an individual what you enjoy doing what you're good at doing what you don't enjoy doing um, and competency interviews they're a bit more black and white they're a little bit more dry they're a little bit more you've kind of got to stick to a formula with how you answer them but the benefit of that is that they're, they're a little bit easier to prepare for so there's kind of pros and cons to to both and understanding what type of interview you're going to be going in for is, is really going to help you in in prep, uh, preparing for it so as I mentioned, a competency interview is, is are those interviews that ask you for examples of things that you've done. Can you tell me about a time when? Can you give me an example of a time when? Um, and they want to hear the details of, of how you've done those things in the past, because that's going to give them a bit of an indication of, of how you might uh, take on the same tasks in the future. So the type of questions that might come up are like these. Tell me about a time you worked as, as part of a team to achieve something. Tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult person. Um, they're very specific. They're looking for hard, concrete examples, um, which, which is why, as I said, you should kind of have some of these ready and prepared before you go into your interview so that you've got this kind of all these good examples in your back pocket and whatever the competency question that comes up, you've hopefully got something that you can, you can mould to fit what, what they're asking you. Strength-based interviews in, in comparison, a bit more about your personality, a bit more about how you're going to fit into the company, um, and, and they want to get to grips with your kind of strengths and, and weaknesses. So it's not going to be so much give me an example of or tell me a, a time when. It's going to be more kind of tell us about stuff, what, what you think you're good at, what do you not enjoy doing so much, um, and so on and so forth. So they sound a little bit more difficult to, to prepare for because in a strength based interview there's there's not really any right or wrong answers and they're, they're a chance to kind of like be quite honest about what, what you enjoy and what you're good at. But you can definitely use some of the same examples that you have prepared for a competency interview to back up your answers in a strength based interview as well and then um, we'll talk about that now. So we'll start with competency interviews, but as I said, this stuff can also be used to back up your answers in, in strength interviews. Um, so this isn't exclusive to competency interviews, but the nature of those questions and um, when they're asking for a solid example to, to give you an, uh, you know, uh, tell me about a time when, um, they mean that there's, there's a kind of solid structured answer that you can give. And you really don't want to, with those questions, start waffling. You also, on the other hand, don't want to be too brief. You don't want to be repeating yourself again and again. You definitely want to be talking about things that 
you have done, not things that we have done as a team or that my manager did. You really want to be using examples that um, provide a good sort of indication of how you have contributed to something or how you have made a decision uh, or how you have decided your working process for that particular task. Um, and all those kind of things that you want to avoid, uh, you'll be pleased to know very easily avoided by using STAR technique. And this is really an excellent way to give a well-structured structured answer. And if you stick to STAR technique, you, you can't really go too wrong in, in an interview situation. So for those of you who don't know, STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. And it's four simple points that you can use to structure your answer really effectively. Situation and task are, are really simple. It's basically just giving some context to what you're about to explain as an example, helping your interviewers kind of understand what you're talking about rather than launching into to what you did and, and what the example is. You just want to basically set the scene and, and give them some background. So where were you? What role were you? Were you working in? What company were you working in? What was your role within, within the team? That's the situation, just context and, and background, setting the scene, letting them know where you were and what you were doing in this example that you're about to give. The task is then exactly what you were trying to achieve in a particular task or project. The task is nearly always, you know, the clue is in, in the question. If they've asked you to, to give an example of a time you've dealt with a difficult customer or a kind of angry person, that is your task at hand. So when I was in this role um, in retail, in as a customer service assistant, for example, uh, you then give the task. I once was dealing with a customer who was extremely angry, they wanted to make a complaint, they were causing a fuss on the shop floor. The task is kind of the problem at hand, um, or else if it's been a question about tell me about a time you contributed to a team, for example, after giving your situation and what your role was in the project, the task is going to be what was that project aiming to do? What as a team were you working towards? So it's just very brief, it's just a quick bit of background to where you were, what you were doing and what the task at hand was. The bulk of your answer should really be on the A part of the STAR answer, which is the action. And you want to really give some detailed explanation of the steps you took, the actions you took to achieve a particular outcome. So how you approached the situation, what your thought process was behind that, the steps you took and why. And then the final part of the answer is the R for result. And that's basically means finishing on a positive outcome. So you always want to, you don't ever want to finish on a negative outcome. You always want to choose an example that had a positive outcome. That might be that you've got the task done, you know, far before the deadline or your manager was extremely happy with you or your team mates were really successfully supported and, and said thank you at the end. Some sort of positive outcome that, that really shows um, that what you did as part of your actions um, was for the benefit of, of the project or, or the team. You could also maybe talk about something you learned from this experience, but as long as it finishes on something positive, that's going to leave a kind of strong impression in their mind every time you, you finish a question. So to kind of give you some, some examples so you can kind of get your head around what I'm, I'm talking about, let's say this is a really common um, interview question, even in non-customer service roles. Customer service skills kind of apply to a lot of roles. It's, it's dealing with the public, it's being customer facing, it's kind of meeting and greeting and answering queries, their skills that are useful in a, in a lot of roles. So we'll use this as an example. Um, so let's look at a, a bad example, first of all, um, have a look at this, this sentence and uh, I'm sure I'm sure you'll agree that it's a pretty it's a pretty terrible answer because there's nothing at all there about what the candidates input was to this problem how they use their skills or abilities it's it's not it's not detailed it's not interesting um, and so you even if this was, was true or this was how you did demonstrate your customer service skills you never want to answer an interview question in this way you're going to want to be much more detailed using star technique to talk through the steps you you took to reach a positive outcome so for example Let's have a look at this. Take a moment to kind of scan through this answer um, and I can point out as, as you go where those sort of uh, STAR moments are. So you can see that they begin with providing their situation. What was the context? They were an online customer assistant at Fridge Magnets. That was their company and their role. 
The next part of the question is the T for task. And that was the fact that they they had an unhappy customer. They wanted to make a complaint. They wanted to get a refund. They'd received the wrong item. And that's really brief. You can see it's a really quick introduction to what they're about to explain of where they were, what they were doing and what was the task or the problem at hand. And as you can see, the bulk of the answer is used up by the A, which is the action. And they've gone into real detail about exactly how they approach this, this problem. And, and it's like no detail is, is too small. They've been really thorough. Um, and this is a really great way of getting across to an interviewer how you sort of approach the problem. So they listen to the customer. They repeat it back to make sure they're fully understood. They promised that they would take responsibility. They used their knowledge of current products to suggest some other alternatives. And all of this is a, a series of steps that really demonstrate customer service skills and that show how this candidate approached the problem, what was their thought process and how did they tackle it. And what is also really smart that this candidate has done, you can see they've said that they stayed uh, at the end of their shift. They, they stay late to make sure that all got done the same day. And then they followed up with a call to the customer to ne the next day to make sure they were happy. And these are really great details to include in interview questions because these are examples of when you're going above and beyond um, your day to day job. It's not just doing what's required of you. It's actually going above and beyond and, and really giving your all to the task or, or to the role. And then they finished with a very brief R part of the answer, the result. They asked to speak to their manager so they could feedback. They want employee of the month. You know, that's it, it might not always be that, that cut and dry, but you're always going to have some kind of good, good result, whether that's your manager being really happy, whether that's you meeting a deadline um, before expectation, whether that's you keeping beneath under budget um, and so on and so forth, some sort of positive uh, outcome. So you can see this candidate has used star technique really well to answer a really kind of simple question. And as long as you've got some of these these examples ready to go there's going to be a lot of questions that you feel quite prepared to answer if you have practiced this technique and if you've got some examples that fit this technique well and uh, another thing that, that, that is kind of smart about that um, answer is that it would actually apply to a, a number of different questions. So yes, it shows customer service skills, but if the interviewer had asked, tell me about a time you overcame a problem, or tell me about a time you had to deal with a difficult customer, or tell me about a time you used your communication skills, that one example really could answer any one of those questions. And so if you've used an example that you thought you were gonna use, you know, for your customer service example, but you've used that elsewhere, you can see that if you're smart about it, you can provide examples examples that really fit quite a number of different skills and competencies that they're asking you to, to demonstrate. So that's a really good idea if you can come up with examples that show a range of skills um, within that one, that one example. So think about the best things you've done, projects where you know that you've made an impact, achievements that you're really proud of, days at work that you knew you had a you had a good day and you were the standout employee that day make notes of exactly why that was um, and what skills you were demonstrating and try and structure your examples around those types of things so strengths-based interviews as i said a bit more difficult to prepare for not necessarily right or wrong answers um, in this I mean there's no right or wrong answers in a competency interview but they're kind of a little bit easier to to judge what what they're looking for uh, what they're looking for you to to demonstrate but in a strength-based interview you can still absolutely use those examples when when answering a question so if they ask you something like um, you know what do you really enjoy doing using the last example that we've just looked at if you were to say oh well I really love customer facing roles for example and then provide one of your customer service examples of you going above and beyond um, and, and seeing the customer so happy and that's really what you find rewarding. Um, you can still use those examples that you've prepared for a competency interview to back up what you're saying about your strengths um, in a strengths-based interview. And you can use, as I said, examples not just from your work history, but from volunteering, from anything extracurricular that you've done. Um, these interviews are all about getting to know, getting to know you as a, as a person, um, um, but still using some solid examples that, that really back up what you're saying. This applies to both strength and competency interviews, but one of the most important, important things is to, is to show that you are enthusiastic. 
especially in a strengths-based interview, which is about gauging your gauging your personality, but it applies to to both of them. There are roles that I am definitely confident in the past that the, there would have been other candidates um, probably more more qualified than me, but I may have got the job because I really made a conscious effort to show that I was enthusiastic and really willing to get stuck into the job and that it meant a lot to me to, to get that role. Um, and that really can compensate for a lack of, of, of many skills if you have a genuine enthusiasm. And it's one of the things interviewers love to see most when they see someone come in who they can tell is really passionate about joining them that can that can actually sort of compensate for, for a multitude of, of sins um so it's definitely one of the most important things I'd, I'd make sure that you're you're looking physically um enthusiastic about the idea of, of getting involved in in the job and they're going to want to see that you're a kind of sunny positive person to bring into the workplace so always always try and make sure your tone of voice that uh is is sort of enthusiastic that you're changing it up a bit that you're not too monotone that you're not too quiet that you're smiling when when appropriate not i mean you don't need to have a fixed sort of grin on throughout the interview but at the appropriate moments that you've got a bit of personality and that you're enthusiastic to to get involved with this company so as I mentioned, you're almost definitely going to be asked at the end of an interview, do you have any questions for us? And as I said, yes, you always are going to. So it's important to kind of prepare a couple of questions um, before your interview to expect that question um, and to be ready to show that you're genuinely interested in the role. But do do watch out and, and be careful because some of your questions that you might you might be preparing might actually be quite easily answered if you just look at the job description or the or the website. So try not to ask questions about anything that is in the information that you've already been given because that's kind of going to suggest that that it's a bit of a lack of research on your part and you haven't looked at things in as much detail as you as you perhaps should. So try and come up with questions that um, are not answered anywhere in anything that you've, you've already given. So the type of questions you might wanna ask are things like this, things that show that you have a genuine interest in the role, in the workplace. What do you most like about, about working here? What are the challenges you might face shows that you're kind of already preparing uh, and wanting to overcome some of the more difficult things in the role. If it's not been covered in the job description, you might want to ask how many people will you be working with in a team or who you're going to be working most closely with. You might want to ask questions about training and progression. Are there any opportunities for professional development or what what the person currently in that role is now going on to do. You might want to talk, ask questions about the workplace culture. What does a typical day look like for someone doing this role? Questions you can see all of these show an actual interest in the role itself and in being at that workplace. Um, don't ask questions about pay or holiday or sick time off or the hours you're you're working save all that until you've been offered offered the job if you get offered the job of course you can you can ask those questions but in the interview try and save your questions for things that that show a real enthusiasm um, and a genuine interest in the role so one of the best possible ways you can prepare for an interview is to is to practice it with MGX Works. We are always willing to help students prepare for, for interviews. And I would definitely say that practice practice makes perfect we can do mock interviews with you guys we can you know if you basically send us the job description for something you're going for we can we don't have a crystal ball we don't know exactly what might come up but we'll have a bit of an idea of the type of things that you'll be wanting um, to demonstrate in the interview so we can come up with some mock questions and we can actually just practice the delivery of your answers make sure you're using star technique in the best possible way so not just the content of your answers but how you're delivering them um, just to make sure you're as prepared as as possible and definitely definitely i would say in my experience the students who do a practice interview with us um, definitely tend to tend to get the job more more often than than those who don't so while you're here while you're at university use the service I wish I had done that before I graduated because I found out the wrong things to do in interviews the hard way. So definitely use us while, while we're here, while you're here um, and, and do a practice run, book it in with your advisor. If you would like to arrange a mock interview or if you do have anything coming up, you can email us mdxworks at mdx.ac.uk or you can go on to mdxworks.com and book an appointment with, with your advisor. So what about video interviews? These are definitely going to be more and more common um, with, with everything that's, that's going on. 
whether that be on Zoom or, or Teams or other, other platforms. Everything we've talked about so far still applies to video interviews, but there are actually a few additional things that you should, you should probably bear in mind. Um, so let's have a look at those. The first is your being aware of your background and what's behind you, making sure it's tidy and, and not too distracting. Um, a blank wall is fine. Um, it doesn't have to be blank if you've got, you know, sort of things that look nice and tasteful. If you've got a plant or you've got a bookcase or whatever, that, that's all fine. But try not to have anything, anything too distracting, any kind of weird posters behind you or a, a bed headboard is not really ideal. You kind of want to be set up somewhere if you can. I'm sure you guys are all well well practiced in in Zoom by now with all the remote learning. So I'm sure I'm sure you've all run into this problem of the mute button, and, and we all do it. But if it is your turn to talk, make sure you haven't committed that rookie error and uh, muted yourself. Make sure, of course, they can hear you when when they are supposed to be. You can. Uh, it's not as easy to make eye contact with the interviewers as when you're face to face or, or in person. What you can do in a Zoom interview is look into the camera itself and that kind of gives the impression of eye contact with the interviewers because they're looking at the screen and you're kind of looking into the camera and that makes it look as if you're you're looking at them and um, which I know might sound a little bit a little bit odd but actually if you've prepared some answers um, rather than kind of looking at their faces and judging how how they're reacting to what you're saying it might actually be quite helpful to just really focus in on that little camera at the top of your laptop and 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 go through what you've what you've prepared and make sure you're being articulate and saying it uh, exactly as, as you planned it might actually be a good a good little trick to help you help you focus choose a quiet place try not to be disturbed if at all possible by barking dogs or, or crying babies um, make sure your phone is turned off if you're on a computer and you get email notifications None of mine have gone off yet, but uh, normally the, you're getting that constant outlook sound, which I'm sure is very annoying. So if I was in an interview, um, I would definitely make sure that's that's turned off. If you can use a laptop or computer, if at all possible, that is probably preferable to um, to being on, on your phone. Sometimes using a phone over Zoom, it tends to be a bit more, you know, if you're getting a bit of motion sickness by it moving around a lot, or you're getting sort of close-ups of your forehead or up your nostril a laptop is kind of much easier to, to keep in one place keep the camera still for you to sit up straight and and obviously make sure it's charged you don't want it cutting out on you halfway through the interview um, and uh, by the same token test your internet connection make sure it's working fine if sometimes places and people's houses have different internet connection to, to other rooms so make sure that you're in a room that you know normally doesn't have doesn't have that many problems uh, when it comes to the internet Dress smartly, even below the waist. Not only is this going to look more professional, but it really is going to affect the way you're kind of holding yourself. And I know that they're only going to be able to see you from, from the waist waist up. But if you've kind of got dressed for interview, it's just, I, I promise you, it will affect the way you kind of hold yourself and the way and the way you feel. Even if you're in a nice shirt and tie, um, you don't want to be in a box of shorts underneath or, or a pair of pajamas. Um, so dress smartly, just for the interview, just, you know, get into sort of that, sort of that character of the uh, the new young professional that's going going for this job and practice with the platform like I said I'm sure you're all pretty well practiced in zoom by now but if they're using another platform like Microsoft Teams or Skype or something that you haven't used so much do a test run with a, with a friend or family or one of us um, staff at MDX Works would be happy to run a test with you anytime as well so a quick note about confidence um, obviously, interviews are one of those situations. They make us they make us all a bit nervous. Um, but of course, we all want to appear confident in in an interview. Um, and and I know it's another sort of cliche, but that kind of fake it till you make it. There really is a lot of a lot of truth in that. If you can kind of just work on appearing more confident, other people will see you in that light. I, I promise. They're not going to know what's kind of going on in, inside your head, the, the panic or nerves before an interview. You've got to kind of fake it on the outside and once they see you as a more confident person it will actually affect your own perception of yourself if they believe you're confident you will start to believe that you're that you're more confident and of course all the things we've talked about are just going to help you feel a, a bit more confident on that kind of subconscious level if you've practiced your answers if you feel fairly well prepared if you've done all that industry uh, research like I've recommended and kept your skills and knowledge up to date um, or if you come and practice with the MDX Works advisor 
noises and, and got a kind of pep talk from us. All of those things are just going to help you feel much better when it comes when it comes to, to interview. So don't worry, everyone has, has got those, you know, nightmare moments of, of not feeling uh, too confident but you can absolutely overcome those things. Um, and what I would say as well is that in an interview situation, appearing confident, um, actually it, it definitely includes things like speaking slowly and, and taking your time. Confident people um, are not going to be afraid to kind of ask for a moment um, to, to repeat the question, for example. Because that's, that's one of those nightmare moments that we all imagine when you get asked a question in an interview and you just you just go blank for a moment and you actually don't know how to answer it it is absolutely fine to stop and say to the interviewer um you know that's a really great question can i just have a have a moment to think about that and that's absolutely fine they cannot hold that against you they're not going to mind doing that is is much much better than just starting blurting out and kind of waffle just for the sake of talking or, or filling the silence um, and it's actually going to seem much more confident if you you know if you're um sort of assured enough to ask for a second to to think about that um and it's much better than kind of just winging it same as if they if they ask you a question that you're not exactly sure what they mean by it it's absolutely fine to ask them to kind of clarify you know, uh, what do you mean this or what do you mean by by that question again that's much better than kind of guessing what it is they're saying and, and providing an answer that that really isn't what they're what they're looking for at all um, speak slowly if you can I, I know I'm definitely guilty of this. I come from a big Irish family who will speak at 100 miles per hour. So this is something I need to do consciously quite often. But in an interview, it's really easy, especially when we're nervous, to start kind of rattling through what, what we have uh, to say. Um, but just to try and breathe, speak slowly. Um, and that's just going to help you kind of settle, settle your nerves a little bit. On the other side of all that, try not to come across as, as overconfident. That can be pretty off-putting as well if you seem kind of cocky or, or arrogant. You want to seem enthusiastic uh, and confident in your abilities, but not, but not, too, not too much, not sort of overconfident or kind of uh, braggy. So all these things that uh, some of these we've talked about before. Um, the eye contact, the body language. Use your hands to talk. Try not to fidget, but do use your hands as a, you know, um, to speak kind of a bit more expressively. Smile and look like you're enjoying the interview, even if you're not and you're hating it inside. Try and make it look like you're you're enjoying it. Consider your answers, as I said. Also listen to what's being said. Sometimes you'll find in an interview they will prompt you for something further or they'll ask you after you've given your answer, but, but what about this? Um, and try and get a sense of what it is that they're, they're prompting because normally if that's the case, they're looking for something just a little bit more. So for example, if they've asked you where, to give an example of a time when you've dealt with an angry customer, maybe you've given a really great answer about how you diffused the situation, how you took them away, how you spoke to them in a calm manner, how you made sure they understood they were being heard and listened to and you've given a really great answer but they might then try and prompt you for something further they might say but what if they still didn't calm down or then what would you do if they were still angry um so when they ask for things like that try and try and think about what it is they're prompting you for so maybe you haven't yet said that you would escalate the situation or that you would seek uh, assistance from your supervisor sometimes they'll be asking for those like little details to show how you would approach a problem so if they do ask you for something more think about what you haven't covered yet rather than repeating yourself and think about anything else that you can add to your answer that makes it really fully rounded um, and don't preempt questions listen to what they're saying sometimes it'll sound like they're asking uh, they're about to ask a question but it goes in a sort of different direction so don't preempt what they're saying actually listen and stop and consider what is it they're trying to find out from you and sort of formulate your answer um, based on your judgment of that. There are some links here um, uh, that you might find useful to, to have a look at. Prospects has got loads and loads of uh, sample questions for both strength and competency-based interviews. So as well as the kind of common questions that I've covered, they have a bunch more. So, you know, to be really prepared, you could prepare an answer for every, every single one of them and then you can't, go, you can't go that wrong. And on MDX Works, on our resources tab, we also have a guide to answering interview questions. And a lot of this content is kind of um, condensed in that um, and it goes into that star technique and in a little bit more detail if you want to get in touch if there's anything i've not covered or anything you'd like to uh, ask about or practice um, an interview 
do get in touch with us. There's loads of different ways. You can go do it via mgxworks.com. You can call us on that number. So I'll give you a moment to, to take a note of those. Um, or you can email us at mgxworks at mdx.ac.uk. Keep an eye um, out on what we're doing because we quite often have got pop-up workshops or events or employers coming in. And a lot of the time this is focused on interviews. Sometimes it's focused on other things that might help you, applications, CVs, um, things that are just really going to help you stand out when it comes to to searching for a job so that's everything do get in touch if if uh, if i've missed anything or if we can help you with anything else i hope that was useful and uh thanks everyone for listening and good luck